Man lights zombie arm on fire just to detect height of cliff. The dim flame illuminated the surroundings below. They had been climbing for a day to escape this place. At this moment, the bright light ahead represented that the exit was getting closer. They continued along the stone wall. Here, there was an artificially excavated passage. It seemed like this place might have been a mine in the past. Daryl walked to the end and checked. There was indeed an exit up there, but it was blocked by something. They had to clear it first. Just as they began, Kelly found a box in the corner. Upon opening it, he discovered it was a box of explosives. Kelly picked up one of them and wanted to show everyone this valuable find. Carol also stared at the explosives, her mind racing with other ideas. But Jerry interjected, These explosives have probably been here for a long time and are highly unstable now. Any impact or pressure could cause them to explode. You should handle them with extreme care. Kelly didn't want to take any risks and carefully place them back in the box. After a while, the blocked exit was finally cleared. Since Kelly was petite, they decided to let him try first. But the hole was too small. Only a head could barely peek out. It had to be enlarged. But then Daryl looked behind him and saw that Carol had disappeared. And he had a bad feeling in his heart. Daryl checked the explosives box and noticed that several sticks were missing. Carol had by this time returned to the spot where she had just been. And even climbed the crags in spite of the danger. Below. There was a horde of zombies. This woman seemed possessed, showing no concern for whether she might harm her teammates. She placed the explosives in the crevice, knowing that detonating them would cause a collapse in the mine, potentially wiping out a significant portion of the zombies. Trembling, Carol lit a match. It's so dangerous. Just when she can't hold on any longer, Take out half a horde from here. <gasps> you didn't get yourself killed. Did she kill my boy? You gotta come back with me. Please. At Daryl's persuasion, Carol also prepared to return. She was about to take the dynamite down with her, but it fell straight down. The consequences were predictable. The whole mine began to tremble, and the hole they were about to go out collapsed. Jerry and Aaron quickly picked up supporting beams, urging the others to get out as fast as possible. But Connie, being the kind-hearted person she is, worries that Daryl is in trouble and goes back to look for him. Magna had no choice but to follow suit. Kelly leaped out of the cave entrance, but before he could steady himself, a whisperer charged at him. As soon as he dealt with that one, several more whisperers emerged from the distance. The rest of the group hadn't made it out yet, so Aaron had to rush out to assist Kelly. Jerry remained behind struggling to support and wait for Daryl and the others to return. Three minutes later, they finally came back. Carol had sustained minor injuries, so Daryl had to go out first and then attempt to rescue her. At this moment, some more whisperers appeared from behind, and Magnus stepped forward to confront them. Jerry had just made it out of the cave entrance when the box of explosives was crushed. Causing an explosion, Connie and Magna were left inside. Their fates uncertain, Daryl quickly ran back to check. His lover Connie was still inside. In his heart, he realized that it was unrealistic to try and clean these up anytime soon, and that they had most likely already died. Kelly was also deeply saddened that his sister had been buried inside. However, he didn't let his grief cloud his judgment and instead urged everyone to leave because the explosion would surely attract both zombies and whisperers. They needed to survive to have a chance to come back and rescue them. Daryl stopped insisting because Kelly had a point. Daryl didn't say a word of blame, just told Aaron to take everyone back, then tell the community to get ready for war with the whisperers. He decided to search for the entrance the whisperers used to get into the mine. Maybe Connie and Magna are still alive. Hope might be dim, but he had to try. Carol cried bitterly nearby, consumed by immense regret. Everyone tried to convince her not to act recklessly, but her two selfish acts had already caused everyone great suffering, and they might have lost two companions forever. At the Alexandria safe zone, the woman took off her zombie mask and revealed her true face. It was Mary, a member of the Whisperers. Gabriel didn't believe a word she said. Maybe it was a trap. Mary sighed, saying, I just wanted to help. The child that the hilltop saved is my nephew. I betrayed the whisperers to see him again. Gabriel nodded and the patrol put away their weapons. Mary looked at Alexandria's safe zone as she walked away. She was greatly shocked, as it was a far cry from what Alpha had described to them. But when she walked in, when Mary woke up again, she found herself lying in a cell. Gabriel stood at the door, 
threatening, if you can't prove the accuracy of your information, or if Daryl and the others don't return, you won't get a second chance, because Gabriel could tell that Mary was hiding something when she said she was the baby's aunt, Mary's helpless face had a hint of sadness, and then she said what she was hiding, Gabriel's demeanor softened a bit, as a priest, he was skilled at reading people and sensed that Mary was not lying, later, Mary was brought to a meeting room where she marked the location of the cave on a map. She also told them to go to the rescue without worrying about running into the Whisperers. The Whisperers' borders are long. Alpha doesn't have enough people to keep an eye on them, and most of them are near the caves. With these detailed pieces of information, the rescue operation was set into motion. Mary was once again confined while they had to wait for their return. Originally, Gabriel had planned for him and Rosita to lead separate teams to the rescue, but just as they were about to depart, a message came over the radio from a lookout station 5 kilometers away. It reported that nearly a hundred zombies, mixed with some whispers, were approaching the community. Gabriel speculated that the whispers were sending zombies at this critical moment to thwart their rescue mission, they had no choice but to reshuffle their personnel. Gabriel prepared to lead most of the fighting force to the lookout station, intending to disperse the zombies there before heading to the cave for the rescue mission. Rosita, Laura, and a few others stayed behind at the main gate to guard against any zombies that might approach from other directions. Then they set off. What they didn't know was that Aaron and the others had already escaped, but hadn't returned home yet. As night fell, a hand emerged from one of the graves in the cemetery, followed by a figure slowly climbing out. It was Beta, one of the Whisperers. Alpha ordered Beta to infiltrate the Alexandria safe zone and bring back the Traitor Mary, and this tunnel was dug by Dante when he was an undercover agent. Tonight was destined to be a night bathed in blood. Inside one of the houses, a father and son were suiting up in armor, preparing to go out and fend off zombies. He said to his son, let's have a competition to see who can kill more whisperers. Don't be afraid. In one-on-one -on -one situations, the whisperers are a joke. Beta drew the long knife from his waist and started making his way towards the residential buildings. However, they failed to notice the extra figure at the door, and the candle was extinguished. What awaited them was death. After finishing off the father and son, Beta moved silently to the adjacent house, where a family of four was enjoying their dinner. Unbeknownst to them, the towering figure had already infiltrated their home. What followed was a gruesome massacre, and Gabriel's team has arrived at the outposts. There were no zombie hordes there. Instead, they found the guards brutally slain on the ground. The wounds were clearly inflicted by humans. Gabriel's face was gloomy. He felt something was wrong. Then he called Rosita with the intercom and asked her if there were any zombies over there. Rosita was equally puzzled. They had been waiting for the zombie horde. But by now, there was not a single trace of them. Gabriel started to contemplate the situation. If his guess was correct, someone had likely coerced the guards into delivering false information. Upon learning the situation, Rosita felt uneasy as well. This was clearly a ploy to lure them away from the community. Suddenly there were zombies walking out in the distance, all with wounds on their necks. Obviously someone had broken in. Meanwhile, Beta had made his way into the underground cell and spotted Mary in the corner. He didn't immediately strike her down because Alpha wanted her alive. Just then, a long axe pressed against Beta's neck. Laura had just arrived at the cell and saw the whisper inside. Mary quickly rushes out. She comes to the road and shouts but there's no one around. At this time, Laura, thinking she had the upper hand with her weapon, believed she had the situation under control. Laura leaped onto his back to stop him, but Beta easily threw her against the railing, breaking free. However, she encountered the physically strong Beta. Beta lifted her off the ground and slammed her against the wall with tremendous force. This time Laura fell to the ground, dead or alive. As Beta exits the dungeon, Mary is nowhere to be seen, and he notices a light on in the house next to him. The house was very quiet. As seasoned wilderness survivors, the whisperers had acute senses. Beta sensed a faint disturbance upstairs in the house. When he reached the second floor, the feeling became even more pronounced, emanating from one of the rooms. Beta reached for the doorknob with his left hand, while his right hand gripped his knife tightly. It was Judith who fired the shot. Mary looked at Beta, lying motionless on the ground. He appeared dead. After the two little ones left, Mary once again went up to make sure that Beta hadn't moved and was ready to turn around and go downstairs. But suddenly, Beta went up and saw that Mary had fainted. Beta pulled open his own collar just now almost died. Good thing the armor saved his life. At that moment, a loud shout came from behind Beta, and Rosita rushed in. Beta took out his long knife and approached step by step. As long as it wasn't a pistol he had no fear at all. He charged forward, 
slashing, but Rosita agilely evaded, she retaliated with a strike, but it only hit Beta's armor, leaving her arm wounded as Beta counterattacked. Rosita regained her composure and reconsidered her attack strategy. The cut hurts the big man, but Beta is still on his feet. This guy's just too strong. Mary, holding a knife to her own neck, understood that Alpha had sent Beta to capture her. She was willing to trade her own life for Rosita's. So, Mary willingly followed Beta back to the Whisperers. Mary knew that the only reason Alpha wanted to take her alive was to kill her in front of the clan so that she could gain more prestige. However, they hadn't gone far when a group of people emerged from the woods, and Beta quickly retreated. It was Gabriel and the others who were heading back. Seeing Mary walking with Beta, they immediately suspected that she had deceived them to lure them outside. Mary did her best to explain that she had followed Beta out in order to save someone. Her voice carried a hint of tears as she spoke. Gabriel lowered his weapon, sensing that the woman wasn't lying. The next morning, the group returned to the community and discovered the tunnel beneath the cemetery. That's when they saw that Aaron was back, which was a blessing in disguise. While out looking for the zombie group, Magna and Connie are buried in the cave. Kelly and Jerry have gone back to the hilltop. Daryl remained near the cave, and Carol, feeling guilty for her actions, roamed alone outside the community, so Aaron's the only one back. After a while, three carriages were prepared. Rosita intended to go to the hilltop to seek medical treatment. In addition, there was a promise to take Mary to see her nephew. What Mary did last night won Rosita's favor.